and we're going to go through a refrigeration cycle of a system that has that is properly charged and we'll talk about what happens with the refrigerant and see what um, what happens with superheat subcooling and the sensible and latent heat and so forth all right so let's start out here leaving the compressor we have high pressure high temperature vapor and it's superheated it has superheat in it that's on that the end of that chart there and it is pretty hot and it it, it leaves the compressor and, and enters the condensing unit outside and at this point it's 100 percent vapor and it is getting it's desuperheating so it's shedding that heat see it's 200 degrees of uh, refrigerated refrigerant vapor the outdoor air is 95 degrees so we know that those molecules in motion um, are going to travel from a substance that has more heat energy which is the refrigerant to uh, the outside air which has less heat energy at 95 degrees fahrenheit so we're desuperheating at this part of the uh, refrigeration cycle so the temperature is going from 200 degrees and it's going down to a 95 to or 195 to 190 and at a certain point as it's designed to in the condensing unit it will now have shed all of the um, superheat all of that sensible heat and it will start to change state from vapor to liquid at this this point when it starts to change state from vapor to liquid the temperature stops dropping and it remains and in this example at 125 degrees fahrenheit and so at this point the refrigerant is at 125 degrees fahrenheit and now it is starting to change state from vapor to liquid or we're condensing back down so as we move through the um, condensing coil and the fan is blowing the 95 degree air over the top of that coil more and uh, more heat is removed from this refrigerant and it will continue to change state from vapor to liquid vapor to liquid all of that heat that's required to um, change it to vapor is being released outside so at the point halfway through our um, condenser we're now it's now 50 50 50 percent vapor 50 percent liquid and it continues on through the system no matter what point while it's changing state that you put the thermometer here here or here it's all going to be 125 degrees because remember when it's changing state it doesn't change the temperature but it is it is getting rid of the heat all right so we're again changing state now we're starting to get to the point where it's um 75 percent liquid 25 percent vapor all the way through and at a certain point when it, when there's a properly charged system the um, refrigerant is now 100 percent liquid and when it's 100 percent liquid it, it is still at 125 degrees it is still has more heat energy than the outside air and it will continue to shed heat however um, the heat that is shedding is not that much and it is sensible heat so it's going to start to drop the temperature of the refrigerant that liquid refrigerant as it starts to travel back um, in towards the indoor unit and as it gets up to the metering device it is uh, in this example down to 105 degrees Fahrenheit and um, it's 100% liquid we have a solid column of liquid hitting the metering device that's what we want to have um, the reason that you want to have a solid column of liquid and and subcooling first of all the reason we want to have subcooling in um, our refrigeration system is every bend that you have in this in the liquid line any ding from the lawnmower any long length of pipe or a poorly brazed joint begins to drop that pressure um, and which drops the temperature and if we don't have enough uh, sensible heat here in this line it's going to start to flash over into gas before we hit this metering device up here so let's take a look 